Greetings, this is Jared Love, and I've got another rigging experiment video for you guys. So it's obviously about a foot roll system, but it has a compensation effect in it. However, before really getting into that, I'm going to just kind of briefly sort of go over this foot roll system I've got. And it's pretty similar to a lot I've seen in the past. But basically, it's kind of like that, you know, typical reverse foot system. I don't really like calling it reverse foot because the foot isn't actually reversed or anything like that. But basically, it's, you know, you got the heel pivot and then you've got a toe pivot parented to that and then a ball pivot parented to that. And then you've also got with that another toe tip pivot so that you can get the toe to go up and down. And depending on how that hierarchy is set up, you parent your IK handles to different groups in it. So, so it's basically that. And I have a foot roll for an overall rolling attribute to apply to the whole thing. Uh, I've set it up so that this is actually like a rotation value. So, you know, at negative 90, which <laughs> the feet aren't going to play along with that. So, you know, negative 90 is like 90 degrees all the way back and then a positive is going to obviously be the opposite of that so but I've got this ball break value where this is telling the the ball of the foot how much to roll before the toe starts getting activated so you see uh, from 0 to 40 it's the ball of the foot is rotating and then once we get to 40 then after that the toe tip is rotating and so between the two of these you can as you're animating, if you animate both of these together, you can kind of flatten this back out to zero and continue the roll tip. So before the foot actually leaves the ground, you could kind of get that foot straightened back out. So that's the idea with this. A um, couple of other things I've added to the foot. Uh, I have my movable pivot or animatable pivot. And you can see, I mean, I call it mine. I've, I've seen other people who've come up with something similar too, but I've got another video that you can watch for how to set that up, but that's kind of a cool tool there. And then uh, over here, I just, you know, I've got you know, like the toe tap. I've got a couple others for the side for tilting the toe, moving the ball of the foot to move that ankle point. So just a couple of other things to kind of help liven up the foot and give it a bit more of a um, flexibility in the foot. Uh, than, than just really dead kind of looking feet. So, you know, that foot roll and stuff like this is, is it works great for, for a foot that's completely flat. And this is actually kind of something that even years ago when I was in college, I kind of always had a bit of an issue with or just something where I was like, man, why doesn't that work better? Because feet aren't normally really flat. So like if we just, you know, I did a quick little image search for footwear and at least in a shoe, there's in every shoe I've ever seen, the toe of the foot is always lifted up just a little bit. So like you look in all of these, I mean, even in this uh, kind of open-toed sandal woman shoe there, all of them, they have the toe lifted up. Like this one looks like it's the lowest to the ground, almost flat, but there's just that little bit there at the tip that's still rotated upwards. So in practical purposes, what will end up happening is what kind of one or two things I've seen. You either have a modeler who will model the foot flat completely so that the toe tip is completely flat on the ground. And then I guess they have the animators kind of put a little lift into it, which is fine. The other thing I've seen is the modelers actually, you know, model it out with the raised toe in the model. And so when you're rigging it, you'll either put the pivot there or I've seen I've seen it put on the ground plane, which is also odd to me. But either way, what ends up happening is you you have the roll happen and, you know, it gets to the ball. And then when it gets to the toe, the toe is lifting off the ground. So like you're no longer actually attached to the ground. In fact, even at this point, you're not really touching the ground that much anymore because of that one little spot. It just it's it doesn't look right so either the animator will have to you know compensate it by you know doing some counter animation moving the foot down or you know negating out that raised toe with a toe tap control or some amount of counter animation to get that taken care of so the idea or the test or experiment was to see if i could get rid of that so i added in this uh, toe tap comp 
multiplier for compensating the, the toe tap. And this was just a proof of concept. So you could actually set it up with a default innate toe raised. You would just have to calculate the rotation value needed. And I don't know, you could still add it to the toe tap and all that kind of stuff too, just to kind of make it a little bit easier on the animators, I think. So now just to kind of show you, uh, so this one has it, but this one doesn't. So the right foot is kind of what I was just showing you guys, but just to kind of show you side by side so you can kind of more easily see it happening. When it rolls, the, the toe basically flattens out to the ground. And then when you're rolling on the tip, it's actually on the ground plane instead of in the air. So that's basically the, the idea was trying to get that kind of behavior to happen. And if I slow it down kind of here, just as we get to that, uh, that point, you see that the ball still continues doing its rotation up, but it's taking the toe section of the foot with it until it gets to that ground plane. And then it continues the rotation with the toe. So, there are a few kind of minor limitations with this that I've found. So if you, once you get the ball to that flat spot, basically, the toe tap isn't really working anymore. So you can see it happening over here, but not on this foot. And so it'll either work when you get into the negative. So you like, it'll do it to the negative direction. But when you go into the positive, it won't actually kick in and start raising the toe until you get to or surpass your roll value. So you can see it going up here now. So like you could set it, so let's let's just put it down to like 34 or something like that. And then when you continue to roll, it's gonna put that foot right back down to the ground. Now, another little weird thing about this, just the way the math is working out on stuff, if your toe tap is higher, then your ball break value, which, you know, this is what it would look like. So the likelihood of this kind of thing happening would be small. But if you continue the roll, once you get to the tip, it's going to be rotating off of the air again. But that basically you can fix either by making sure this toe tap goes back down below the ball break value or just raise your ball break value till it's above this and that's going to put that foot back down on the ground. So, you know, it's a little bit of give and take kind of a thing, but uh, you know, if if I put this back to 40, so yeah, so it's I don't know, it's it's kind of cool. Um now that's kind of why I put in this multiplier so I could turn it on and off so that if you if the animator had a spot where they actually did need the toe tap still, they could do it. But I, I don't know, I, I'm still on the fence of whether or not to keep that because like, honestly, like with how fast a foot roll is actually going to go, I don't really see a, a situation where an animator is going to be like kind of doing a really slow roll and we get to here and then we need to raise the toe a little bit more, you know, so I don't know, but I like to have options for the animator. So I put that in there just in case there was something that they needed, uh, still debating that, but, um, and it does kind of feel a little funny, like if you're just kind of rocking back and forth between the the foot flat on the ground and then the uh, toe flat on the ground. So it, it kind of has that weird rocking feel to it. But when you're actually just looking at it doing a roll, that looks and feels right to me. So it, uh, I don't know, it may take a little bit more experimentation or something, but yeah, take that for what it is. So uh, I'm not really going to show like the network of how this stuff is going. There's some math nodes involved with it. And the basic gist of what's happening is I am using something to move and adjust the rotate pivot of that toe tip group node. So I tried doing it uh, at one point, but it was getting a cycle. So I ended up having to have kind of like a duplicate toe group that I was able to use that and keep it independent from the actual foot roll system. And then using that guy, I was able to then calculate where the new rotate pivot needs to go and move to as you're, you know, going into this toe tap value for where that rotation pivot needs to go 
and be aware of when it actually reaches the ground plane. So that's kind of the basic breakdown of, of how that's happening. It's, it's just manipulating that toe tip group nodes pivot point. So I can't really think of anything else to talk about that. I mean, if there's really enough interest in it, I guess I can put together a tutorial video or at the very least just walk through the connections or something. But um, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you guys. Hope you like it and uh, feel free to leave any questions or comments down in the comment section below and have a blessed day.